Hey, Joanna. So yeah, um, although although uh, it was it was a loss, what are the positives you could take? Because you did f have a good fight in the in the octagon tonight. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, but what were the positives you can what, take from, what, from the fight uh, tonight? Positive? What, what were the positives? Positive. Sorry about that. Oh, the positives. So sorry. Like, uh, you know, it's been a while. I fought in the flyweight division for for more than four and a half years ago, so it was something new. But I didn't feel like Valentina was like the strongest opponent in my fighting career. Uh, good traps, good takedowns, and and she scored that cards and. It took a while for me to get out uh, from the bottom position because uh, she was very clever and, and like using smart her hand her hands to block me. But you can see a few bruises, but I didn't take uh, that much damage as her last opponent uh, from her grand and pan. But uh, yeah, you know I, I'm 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 looking I'm I'm looking forward. It was first fight in the flyweight division, and right away. F f fight with such a tough uh, uh, opponent with Valentina and, and, and for the bet, I'm, I'm happy, I'm proud of myself. I, I broke Ronda Rose's record of uh, title fights, I'm very happy and, uh, and yeah, that, that's it, I must take some time off, watch the fight and talk to my coaches Dana and, and, and decide what's going to be the next step. Uh, last question is, uh, I know this is too soon, but you did have a great fight, like you said. Would you like Dana to give you that rematch again with Valentina? Oh, we will see, you know. There is like a bunch of other good flyweights who are in line and I don't want to go like crazy, you know. I, this year was busy for me. I spent more than seven months in the States. So I want to go home to Poland and, and just enjoy the time with my family. And uh, we will see what's next. Uh, definitely, I want to challenge myself and, and chase uh, my other dream and go for the strawweight belt again. So I will wait for um, uh, uh, Andre Ash and, and Rose uh, to fight next year. Rose has only four months left to defend the belt because other way she might lose the belt with no fight. And, and that's, the, that's the thing because I was pretty busy champion. Other champions are pretty busy, but if you don't defend your title once a year, you're losing the belt, you know? And uh, yeah, we, we will see. I, I felt so good this fight week, the whole camp. I put on a hell of a work and I'm proud of myself. Like I said, in this sport, we don't take second place. And, and uh, uh, you know, I don't want to say this because of I lost, but I said this during the week that here shouldn't be like, okay, one person is winning, one is losing, but like even the person who lost is, is not a loser, you know? So that's the thing. And I felt good in the flyway division. I see how my body reacted to the diet and a few more pants. I was happy, in good mood. I could do more. Uh, and uh, definitely it, it, it's a good division for me. You want to, uh, two questions for you. Do you. Number one, do you feel like this was fight at such a high level that you fought about as well as you could fight tonight? Uh, what do you mean? Like, if it was, I did it my seemed best, like a very good technical good, fight. Yeah, yeah. And you fought a very good fight. With, there's not a Thank lot of you. things people could yeah, point yeah. to and say, you yeah. did incorrect. Yeah. It was just she was, had a good night. Yeah. I, I think the fans <laughs> should like the fight. and. Like I said before, Valentina is uh, she was multiple world Muay Thai champion, same me, and uh, they could expect like a technical good fight, and and I hope we gave uh, a good fight. I, I I did my best. That's it. That's why I'm proud of myself. You know, like, I did my best uh, this night, and that's it. And, and the other question you just said a second ago, you were happy the way your body reacted, and you felt you did some good things out there, uh, you were able to do more at 125, yet you talked about going back to straw weight, so you go back and it's yeah. kind of a, a yeah, difficult yeah, yeah, adjustment. Yeah, yeah, I know, but, uh, but I, I must do this for, for myself, you know, to put dot on I and I, I, I will drop one more time to the straw weight division, but you know, I'm not getting younger, I'm getting older and I've been in this business for 15 years, so I want to take care of my body because this camp I, I realized uh, how because I was never complaining about the diet and weight cut, but at this camp I realized how, how 
it can impact your body, your brain and your performance being on such a strict diet for so many weeks or, or the weight cut. So definitely I want to protect myself, uh, protect my body. Uh, but yeah, the, the other stupid thing is I want to do this one more time. That's it. One more time. We always give like second chance and, and for to ourselves and I want to do this. You want to you say that you want to go down one more time is it safe to say that the only way you go down is if it's a title shot? Yeah, only 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 title shot, only title shot. All right. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Is is the pizza good? More pizza. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> pepperoni. Thank you guys for a good fight with
Pour my hair off. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh. All right. The gate was uh, 3.28 million. It was a th this was a total sellout. So today, when we a lot of times we'll announce sellouts, and you'll have, you know, 50 single seats and things like that. We had 100 singles this morning. Not one single seat open for this event. It's the biggest event we've ever done here as far as attendance. Uh, 19,039 people here in the building tonight. The uh, fight of the night was Holloway and Ortega, and the performance bonuses went to Santos and Holloway. Congratulations to them. They all won $50,000 each. Gav, you first? Who's first? Uh, well, this guy's you just. Oh, yeah. You yeah. You stole the mic from him. But, okay. No, I'm not I respect my. Go ahead. I'm a nice guy. Um, I, I, wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask you about uh, Max and just where he rates. And, you know, Joe said an interesting thing in there. He said he might be the greatest featherweight of all time. And obviously, Connor was there and other great fighters were there. How, where, where do you think Max rates right now among the all time greats? It's impossible not to talk about him amongst the all time great now. And, yes, he, he possibly could be the greatest ever. Um, but let, let, let's not forget about, uh, um, uh, I already forgot about him. How about that? <laughs> let's not Aldo. forget about Jose Aldo. Aldo. Yeah, Jose Aldo. And, uh, but yeah, he, he's, in the, he's definitely in the discussion. This guy hasn't lost in five years. This, this fight was huge. Um, it's one of the sickest fights I've ever seen. The chin on Ortega is insane. And uh, what a fight. Could you ever have imagined that he would have taken, I, I think he landed over 50% of his shots, and taken or taken apart that one-sidedly? I mean, you know, he was just, he couldn't be stopped. Well, I think there were a lot of questions coming into this fight. You know, obviously, no questions about how good Max Holloway was, but he had a couple tough times making the weight. You know, we got him tested medically. We knew he was healthy. We knew he was safe. He went into this cut. Seemed great through the whole thing um, and obviously came in and performed tonight at another level. He looked unbelievable. Um, those were the questions, I think, that many people had about him tonight. How would he look after the weight cut and coming back and, you know, the layoff and all that stuff? And wow. And my last question for you, Dana, is when you look at him, uh, he's a guy that has improved so much and he was good to begin with. And, and he continues to improve right. every time he fights. And, and he... Not that he doesn't have submissions, but he's not one of those like like Ortega is is a great submission guy. He seems to be a stand up fighter, and he, it's rare that you have a guy that's that good that doesn't have that other. Well, he does. You know, he I know actually, he has it, but I'm saying he's not he as dangerous good. the other because way. he's that good at submissions. He stays out of them, and he he stays with you know with striking because he's so much better than everybody when they're standing up. Why not? Go ahead, sir. Um, so Dana, you know, you mentioned the sellout, and the crowd was on fire. Is there anything you would change, like aside from the weather, which, which I understand? <laughs> um, oh, the it, weather yeah. wasn't bad either. It was. I, I, I had a good week here. I've been here since Tuesday. I, I, this is the millionth time I've said I love this town. Um, you know, the, people. I said this before too. When when the Maymac thing was happening, they didn't want to come to Toronto, and I said, trust me, we, we got to go to Toronto. People don't realize what a big fight town Toronto really is, and that um, it's a very educated market. You know, almost 20,000 people in there tonight on their feet every round going crazy, understand all the little, you know, all the technical things that go on in, in these fights. And uh, this is a fun place, man. Cool city, great hotels, restaurants, the whole deal. It's a, it's a great place. I love coming here and doing fights. Hey, Dana. Uh, hey, Dana. Uh, elaborating on Brian, like, he just kept coming. He, he, got, he took a lot of shots from Max, but he just kept coming on. Like, how impressed were you with, with Brian's uh, performance? Blown away. I was blown away. Um, I wanted them to stop that fight going into the fifth round. I was hoping that either the referee or the corner was going to stop that fight. The fight needed to be stopped. You know, for all of us in here that have been in the fight game for a long time, that's what you call too tough for your own good. And um, I believe he could have done the fifth round. I believe he would have done the fifth round but it should have never happened. That fifth round should have never happened, and I'm glad that it didn't. He's a young, talented guy, and uh, I think going into that fifth round would have been very bad for him um, health-wise. 
fourth round wasn't good for him health-wise and, and definitely not the fifth round. So uh, I, I commend the doctor here in Toronto for stopping that fight. He did a great job. Uh, last question. Uh, from his uh, commendable performance, would you grant Brian the rematch with Max? Is that too early to tell right now? I, I Honestly, listen, Max is a grown man and we need to talk, but I'd like to see Max go to 55 now. I think that, you know, the guy's 27 and going on 28 years old. He's in the prime of his life, never looked better, continues to improve with every single fight that he's in. And I, and, and I think he's done everything he can do at 45. Why well, keep cutting that weight? And I think there's some big things that him, uh, for him at 55. Uh, you kind of answered Let me get this guy, and then you're next. You're next. No, no, this guy, then you're next. Yep. Uh, coming into the week, Renato Moicano was uh, pegged to be the replacement if anything happened to either fighter. Uh, right. But he came one pound overweight, didn't cut the weight. Does he still deserve the title shot, according to you? Yeah, I mean, Moicano is definitely, I mean, that's why we had him here. That, that guy's incredible. And actually, it's funny. I was on the treadmill today, and on TSN, they had the, uh, the Ortega-Moicano fight on, and I watched that fight again. And that's one of uh, another crazy fight. Uh, really good. Moicano is the man. He's in the mix, and we'll see how this thing plays out. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Right. Take the mic. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, going back to what you said about Holloway and, and suggesting he moves up to 155, but like, and how much influence do you, do you have over that decision, or is that A something lot. you can only <laughs> can you A lot on of board? influence. Hi, Dana over here. Uh, yeah. Speaking of his plans at 155, any interest in running back the Holloway and Omega Medov, you know, booking that almost happened at 223? Yeah. Listen, I'd, I'd like to see him go to 55. You go to 50, if Holloway goes to 55, everybody in the top five is a fun fight for him. And uh, I want to talk about Joanna as well. You know, she said she needs to take some time to think, obviously, and, and, and talk to you in the UFC, of course, um, about what's, what's next. But do you have a particular idea as far as, you know, whether you'd like to see her stay at 125 or go down to 115 as she wants to? Yeah. Um, I love her. She's such a great fighter and, and, and such a good person. And I've actually, I consider her a friend. I want her to take some time off, go spend some time with her family. And then we'll get together and we'll talk about it. But I'd like to steer, see her stay at 15. Yeah. Huh? 15. Dana, just to follow up on Max going up, uh, how does that conversation go for him? Because I imagine you know he would have to be giving up his belt. I'm sure there's perks that come along with that pay-per-view, uh, points, all that kind of stuff. We'll so figure that out. Yeah. So yeah. do you? But for him, he, I'm sure he wants to, you know, either go in there wanting the chance to be a champion right away, those kind of things, right? Yeah, I hear you, but that's not the case at 55 right now because of what's going on. So we got to find out what happens on Monday, and then uh, then I can figure out what's going on with that entire division. You know, it's it's tough when the top two guys in the in the world are both going in for disciplinary stuff, and and uh, you know, so we'll see how this thing plays out. And then we'll go from there. But any, any fights right now are good for Max. And this fight actually was trending really well on pay-per-view tonight, too. So um, obviously, we'll have to figure that out with him. Yeah, Tony Ferguson actually tweeted that he'd like to fight Max if the Habib fight doesn't work out. I love that. I love that shit. Okay. Right on, Tony. And if Max does lead the division, I Did mean. Did Tyrone Woodley call? <laughs> Did he send any texts? No? I haven't seen anything. No, I was hoping he um, might. But, you know, if Max does go up, where's that lead featherweight? Because you already had this, uh, you know, Connor was the champion, and he vacated, moved up. Max kind of rebuilt the championship scene there, went on this run, and then you'd kind of be taking that champion out of the division again and have to rebuild. Is that something that's just part of the process? Yeah, it happens. It happens. I want what's right for Max. You know what I mean? What's right for Max might not necessarily be what's right for the division, but we'll figure that out. I, I think that after his last issues, um, I, I think it would it would be better for him physically and every other way to move up to 55 pounds. You know, yeah. he has not said one word to me, so we'll see how he feels about that. He and I will talk about it, and we'll go from there. Yeah, and I mean, I imagine from his perspective, you know, he said the cut went well, he performed well, he man landed the most strikes ever. Looked in incredible. The fight he looked better than he's ever looked. Not tonight was his his greatest performance, and I thought he looked unbelievable against Aldo. So, I agree.
Do you have an official health update on Brian? I imagine he was transported. No. Um, both these guys, uh, uh, Holloway too. I'm going to make sure that they get everything twice. And just last thing, any other performance that stood out to you? Obviously, you know, Tiago Marta Santos was great. Santos. Uh, Gunnar Nelson came back. Anyone who Gunner really great. impressed that you That was tonight? a great fight, too. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a great card. There were a lot of great fights tonight. Um, yeah, everybody looked good. I, I love the whole crew. Yeah, we, we definitely opened the pay-per-view right. That, that Manoa Santos fight was incredible. Those guys had fight of the night in the bag until the main event happened, you know? Kill, incredible fight. Huh? Yeah, great picture too. <laughs> Dana over I here. I think that was everybody's face during that fight. Dana right here. Yeah. You mentioned uh, the card was trending really well uh, on social media. No, Obviously, no. uh, Canada is a great market. Uh, we've heard some rumblings next year about Quebec City, potentially Vancouver. Any uh, light you can shed on Canadian dates for next year? I don't know off the top of my head, but you know, we just announced tonight that we did another multi-year deal with TSN, which. I'm very pumped up about, and uh, so it's all good, you know? We'll be back. On, on that note, actually, uh, you know, the, with the ESPN Plus happening in the States, how does that affect Canadians with the TV deal? Is it just going to be on TSN, all the, all yeah. the content? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, okay. we're, we're doing the same thing with TSN. We got, uh, we got prelims, pay-per-view prelims. We got fight nights. Uh, my contender series is going to be on TSN. Good stuff. That's great. And, and you talked Thank about you. Max moving up, and so that would leave a void at featherweight. Is, is the idea to do Aldo and Moicano next for maybe a vacant title? I don't know. I, again, I, I haven't even talked to Max yet about the, any of this stuff. You know, I was out there doing interviews saying I want him at 55, and he's standing three feet away from me. And he didn't yell, yeah, I want to go to 55. So he but probably doesn't want to go to 55, I would Would imagine. that make the most sense, though, hypothetically, just because Moicano was the backup? And Aldo, I mean, he's looked great in his last fight. Some things that make sense don't necessarily work all the time, so I don't even try to play this game anymore. I, I, I don't even try to think about what's next until we get there. And, and one more thing on titles. Any update on the welterweight title fight? What's happening with that? With um, you know, Because I know the, the idea was to do Woodley and Covington. What, what's the latest on that? Nothing. So I, I told everybody yesterday I go home tonight, right now. I'm going home after this, and then I will, uh, I'll get this stuff figured out. I go back on the road on Wednesday, so I got two days to get my shit together. John? Yeah. Sorry, I'm working the camera back here tonight. Up, buddy? Yeah, hey, just one question. Uh, Holloway, he doesn't like talking about Connor very much, but they have a history. If he moves up to 155, does running that fight back, I know we got to wait for, for, for the NSAC thing to work out, but does running that fight back make sense to you? Yeah, oh, no, there's a lot of fights for him at that weight. Um, you know, I think everybody in the top five is an interesting, exciting fight for Holloway. So um, that, that's why I, th I say that I think there's bigger and better things for him at 55 pounds. See if he agrees. Hey, Dana. Um, Nick Diaz, Jorge Masvidal. Is that officially on? Is that happening? Uh, yeah, so somebody was just telling me earlier that we, we didn't announce that. Is that true? We didn't announce it or what? I don't, as far, I can't, uh, as far as I know, sitting right here right now, that fight's on. Yeah, as far as I know, that fight is on. Okay. Unless something happened while I was, I've been here since Tuesday. Unless something happened since Tuesday, which is very possible, um, it's on. Uh, and speaking of his brother Nate, I know that you know he was supposed to fight on the MSG card uh, last month, and Dustin kind of you know you know was forced out of that fight. Any update on working with Nate, Nate Diaz to bring him back to a fight soon? No, we got nothing going on with Nate. Okay. Good. Thanks, Toronto. Appreciate it. Have a good night.
sure what they were paying for. I don't know, but I've seen some of the stuff that I posted. My guess is he was just saying, look, we'll have Holloway come in here before he goes back to Hawaii. We'll send him to the hospital. Or take a less transport. Or take a less transport, yeah. And so Max has him there, yeah, right? Is he still around? He's still around right yeah, now. Yeah, so that's why I figured they'll just send him out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kind of hurts every time we just hear. Okay.
Hey, Valentina. Congratulations on your on your win. Uh, just what, after the whirlwind you faced in the, with Nico Montagna, how is how does it feel now to come here and become a champion at UFC 231? I was training so long for this moment. I training hard for this moment, and um, I'm very happy to get this belt. I'm very happy that because for me it's not just meaning the belt of UFC. It's meaning all my uh, hard work that I was doing in martial arts, all my sacrifice for my sport, what I love so much, and this is reflecting in this belt. And uh, last question, uh, how impressed was you? Oh, a great victory, but how impressed were you with uh, Joanna's uh, performance too as well? Um, it was everything that I was expecting from Joanna. I knew it will be a good fight, it will be a tough fight, because she's a tough opponent. She's not the one who uh, give up easily, no. And uh, um, I would say that I'm happy to get the, this belt from this kind of fights, when you are facing real opponent, not just like any opponent, because um, when you get it from the real fight, only, n only this way you can prove that you are a real champion. Hi, Valentina, over here. Uh, how did this compare to your fights against Joanna in the past? I know it was a while ago, but you guys fought many times. How is tonight different or the same? Uh, you know, it's of course a little bit different because um, everything that we have to pass through all this week like all this pressure, not about only the fight, but media and every day to y do your duty and um, not to lose your energy for the fight between all these days, what you have to do with like all this stuff. It's of course it's different. And uh, the atmosphere, the um, organization where we was fighting this this night of course it's like something uh much bigger but you know like uh we did our fight in best muay thai promotion now we are doing in best mma promotion and um, it felt amazing for me it's there is like no much difference just difference the size of gloves you know Joanna said that if she won this title it would help her case for being the best female fighter of all time now that you've won where do you think it puts you among you know, the best, not just in MMA, but in combat sports? You know, for me, important just do what I love to do, to do uh, my, ma my martial arts and uh, compete and uh, to show my techniques, my skill, my speed, my power, everything. It's uh, not, um, it depends on me what I will say, like how, where it will, like, lead me to be best or some kind like this. If people say, okay, I'm agree with this, but I'm the one who wants to act, not to speak. And the last thing, just uh, you know, earlier in the evening, Jessica I, she beat uh, Caitlin Chukagian in a women's flyweight bout. Uh, it looks like she could be your first challenger, nothing official yet. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on that matchup? I, you know, I don't care who will be my next opponent. I'm ready for anyone. And um, this is what I want to do, to defend the belt as much as I can. I'm healthy now. I didn't get, uh, like, any heart injuries. And um, just straight uh, go to the busy work again because I don't uh, like to spend the time and say, okay, I'm champion and I keep my belt for a year doing nothing, just uh, saying hello to the media and, like, showing the belt. No. I want uh, action. For me, this is more important. I had uh, to wait on um, the fights when it will happen with my opponents who, wa who was like holding the belt. Now I'm the champion. I can choose the date, and from it, we will start everything. Valentina, over here. Congratulations. Right, right here. Right. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, you mentioned that uh, you know you want to be active as a champion, and I know this year uh, you've had some fights uh, fall through. Are you looking to get back in there? You know, early 2019. Do you have sort of a date in mind as far as when you, when you want to make your first title defense? Uh, you know, I can say exactly. No one will um, wait so long for my answer. But right now, I don't want to say nothing because I want just enjoy enjoy this night, enjoy my feelings, and uh, just. Um, 
enjoy my victory with my team, with my family, and because it's not just my uh, work, it's uh, everyone's work. My coach, Pavel Fedotov, was training me so hard. He was thinking o only about like my preparation. My sister Antonina, she was preparing for her fight and also helping me. And of course, my manager, Roger, he did his work. And everyone is like a puzzle. And we are all together, uh, we are like a good team. Okay. And you are the champion now, and I know the division's a little bit wide open. You mentioned your sister winning last week. Um, have you discussed with her at all if she keeps winning that, you know, would she have to move up a weight class? How would that work? Because I know, obviously, you won't fight, uh, you, you both won't fight each other. You know, my thoughts on it, I will keep this belt before she go all the way to the number one contender, and then I will see what I'm going to do. Because I still have unfinished business with my opponent in bantamweight. Mm -hmm. So I know exactly I never lost that fight. Mm -hmm. And she knows that I sh that she is not was winner on that fight. And uh, we'll see, we'll see. Just waiting for my sister when she climbs all to number one. And, and last question on that note, you mentioned Amanda Nunez. Uh, did, she was here this week cornering uh, Nina Ansaroff. Did you see her? Did you speak to her at all this week? No, I didn't see her. And even I, if, if I would see her, I, there is no reason for me to speak with her. Hey, uh, Valentina, you know, do you feel like Joanna maybe was overlooking you? You was talking about uh, breaking Rousey's record. She was so excited about that for title matches. Um, and she was also already talking about going after the straw weight belt as well. Did you feel disrespected going into this fight and maybe, you know, some validation having taken her down after all that? Um, you know, I can say about Joanna she, that she's a very dedicated fighter. And... Um, She's really professional but in what she's doing. And even if she's like speaking something, she is very concentrated in, in, on her fights and on her performance. And it was a very good fight because she put everything that uh, she could put from her side to the fight. She did everything to win it, but only the reason I was stronger. And um, this is it, this is it. Like I said before, I'm uh, more happy to get the belt from this kind of fight than from opponents who are like, just don't think uh, that this is her passion in the life. Congratulations on becoming the second ever flyweight champion of the UFC. Would you consider giving the first champion a title shot? Who's that? That answers my question. <laughs> uh, Valentina, in, in, the, in tonight's performance, it was like a universal performance. It was not just striking. It was like you were doing those creative kicks. You were taking her down. Can you talk about the strides you've made even in the last year to become the fighter that you were tonight? Um, it's everything that we are doing. My coach, Pavel, he's um, very um, versatility coach and he's looking for uh, every single moment that I can face on my fight and we are working on it. And of course I'm mixed martial arts, fi arts fighter. I'm not just striker, I'm not just grappler. And I was saying it like every single time. I will do everything what will help me to win the fight. Of course I, before the fight, this fight. I saw it like more happening, striking, more striker. But you know, when it's uh, come to the action, you just, um, your body have to decide what to do. And um, like my body knows what, how to act and it's choose this way. Uh, because sometimes like uh, you cannot put too much mind in the fight. You, only when you are um, like so tired that you cannot continue, the power of your mind will tell you, like, go on, doesn't matter, never give up, yeah? And uh, I'm very happy to have Pavel as my coach because with him I feel like um, he's given me so much on the training that I never will have any troubles on the real fight. And lastly, knowing your own competitive fire, do you expect to fight against Amanda sooner rather than later? I expect it. I cannot say uh, when, but of course it will happen. Because like I said, I not lost that fight and she knows it. Everyone good? Everything should be tight. Okay. 
I think so. I think so. No, Cyborg, Chris, she will beat Amanda Nunes because uh, Chris, she is a very good fighter. She has uh, very good speed and she has very good resistance. And more, um, we were training together. She's my friend and she has to beat Amanda Nunes. Thank you. 
surprise, surprise, surprise. The king is Max. <laughs> Max, uh, congratulations on a very fine performance tonight. Uh, you set all kinds of records. Most significant strikes landed in a fight, in a round. Uh, all these different things could go on and on. Did this performance surpass even your own expectations, or did you think it would go that way? No, oh, man. I, uh, I always try to set the bar, you know? Like I told you guys, I'm going to set the bar. Come, ver come beat me. I dare you. You know, and, um, you know, I, I didn't break the records, actually. Or Ortega actually did it for me, you know. He's taking a lot of punches, so, you know, you, this, is, this is not one-sided. That guy was taking some damage, so, you know, uh, you know, uh, to lose to him and, uh, you know, on to the next. You know, like I said, Bless Express is stopping T-City, you know, all aboard. Don't miss the seat. We're going to the UFC Hawaii now. Dana, take me home. I want a, a virgin lava flow on the beach. So let's go. Hey, yeah, um... You mentioned Brian's toughness. I mean, would, were you surprised that he was able to take some of those shots and you know, didn't even get a knockdown or anything like that, that he was just able to keep taking them? Not at all. You know, it's it is in our blood, you know. it's in, uh, When you watch a Hawaiian fight like BJ, you know, you see him take some shots, you see me take some shots, and you watch Mexicans, they can take some shots, you know. So it's just in his blood, it's in, you know. When, when UFC say fighting is in our DNA, you know, I think he got fighting, he got really fighting in his DNA, you know, in his heritage, they say like me, so it is what it is, you know. Like I said, it's uh, it's Shark Week, and uh, it, that's Max Week, and he got to come to the deep waters, you know, and we found out if it was sink or swim, so we, get, we got to answer the question. Do you think they made the right call stopping it after the fourth round? I, you know, I was, you know, it sucks, you know. I was on some bad calls from doctors, so I know how he feels, you know, but it is what it is. They're in there for our safety. If it was one more round, it's going to be one more round of the same thing. So, you know, the, the doctors is doing their job. And last thing from me, uh, Dana was in here earlier, and I'm sure you've been asked about it already. He wants you to go up to lightweight. And I kind of asked him, obviously, if you did that, you'd be giving up your belt. I'm sure there's certain things in your contract that are beneficial with being a champion yeah, and yeah. stuff. So when it comes to all that, I mean, do you need some sort of assurances if you do go up, whether it's a title fight right away, uh, certain things in your contract? Is that all part of it? Hey, look, look, Dana White is a boss. You know, the boss is looking for super fights, you know? All the UFC guys, you guys, you guys be talking about me fighting at 55 for super fights, so... If it's, if it's uh, you know, everybody keep, I keep hearing the name Connor, you know, Khabib. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, they got something to figure out. I think so. It's, some, it's after this fight, actually, right? The little press thing with that they're going on. So hopefully they can figure it out. Wish the best of luck to them. And uh, and we can sit down with Dana. We'll figure it out. Tony Ferguson said he'd like to fight you. Hey, we see what happens. You know, that's, that's, that's a fun fight. I, I mean, you guys watching Bet It. Someone called me, Tony. So I got a bone to pick. <laughs> Max, you're 16 and three now in the UFC. 13 fight win streak. You just tied GSP, John Jones, Demetrius Johnson, right behind Anderson Silva. Not only, not only are you the, probably the greatest featherweight ever, you might be one of the greatest fighters of all time. Does that drive you to be, become the greatest MMA fighter ever? Yeah, you're wrong. You know, I think I still believe the greatest featherweight of all time is Jose Aldo. And uh, you know, when I'm 30 or 31 or his age, then you ask me if I'm the greatest featherweight of the of all time. If I'm still here. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to be the pound for pound number one, you know. I'm a champion. I'm defending my belt. Now I'm being number one. If it's up a weight class, it's up. If it's here, defending my throne. If I get to fight one of my good friends, the daddiest man on the planet for that title, bring it on, Kung Fu Panda. I got you, DC. You know, Hawaiians, we love eating, and uh, I can see him very soon. <laughs> Max, I mean, over 300 strikes landed in that fight. Like he said, you broke all kinds of records. Uh, when you're just in there, though, and you're standing in front of this guy and you're just hitting him with shot after shot and he just is walking forward and not falling down, what is going through your head? Man, this this guy got just... I was just thinking, he's going to be in here for five rounds taking this much? I hope he's okay, but uh, then so be it. It is what it is. <laughs> he's going to get damaged, you know? That's just, that's my game plan. I take it deep waters, you know? I, like I said, if you're ready to... When you're ready to walk out that door... I'll hold your hand and walk you through that door, you know? But if not, if you're just gonna tough it out, you know? Hey, tough man, good, good, uh, good for you. Yeah, I mean, you were coming off the longest layoff of your career, and I think uh, you have maybe a bit of a reputation as a slow starter, but you going in there and it, you were on fire early. Yeah. Uh, it felt like you found your distance really quickly in that fight. Did you, you know, did you really get into it really quickly as opposed to starting slow in your mind and what, what went into that? 
Yeah, you can thank my coaches for that. They let the they they loosen the leash on me on this one in like early in the round. So uh, early in the fight, you know, in the back, they tell me just be loose, just go out there and do your thing, ready, go attack. Every other fight, they're like they're holding me, you know, like a pit bull, like just pulling me back and being like, hey, hold on, relax, and then it's like a retractable one, you know. So they just keep letting go of the thumb and letting it go. But um, you know, this one they said go get it, go have fun, you know. I was. I was singing my walkout song, you know, I was talking to Ortega in there. I was talking to Joel every time I went back. I saw my son, I told him what's up in there. He told me to keep my eyes on Ortega, so it was cool. Just how good did it feel to get back? I felt great. I felt like a Canadian, eh? <laughs> this is the 10th island. This is ridiculous, you know. Hey, you guys switched up on me on one of the rounds, though. I heard them chanting Ortega, and I was like, wow. I was like, come on, guys. And then, like, they came right back around, and it was, and it was louder. So, hey, I love you guys, 10th island. You guys, you guys are the best. Well, hey, last one for me. I know you're still hesitant to do so, but I mean, Dana White was in here and he said you may already be the greatest featherweight ever. ever. Uh, what would it, you need to do for, in your mind, that to cement for you to become the greatest featherweight ever? I just keep winning. You know? I just got to keep winning. I just got to keep doing my job, keep winning fights, and, and let you guys keep talking about it. You know? But personally for me, I think Jose still it is, and uh, I'm chasing him. You know, he said he set the bar. He still got a bar. I still got to break it, and I'm setting bars for these guys. You know, people are saying that this new era, or whatever. You know, I'm setting the bar for the new era. I guess. You know, when the blessed era is here, the blessed era is gonna be in full effect. Congrats. Hey Max, congratulations on your win tonight. <laughs> Seeing uh, Brian's like performance though, like he was just a warrior in there. Like, would you grant him another rematch in the near future? Like, do you think he deserves one? We see what happens. That's not up to me, you know. I fight whoever, you know. You guys see, uh, a bunch of my fights are short notice in here. You know, I took, I think I got like two fight, two three fights, or actually two fights that they actually let me fight on ten days. I don't care, you know. A couple hours. If Renato was ready for going one hour, I would have, I would have fought again. If they told me, hey, Renato wants to fight, hey, let's do it. Let's we we would have did it twice. You know what I mean? But uh, that's just me. Huh? That's my warrior spirit. Uh, last question is, you consider this the 10th island. Would you uh, want to come back and headline for the third time uh, here in Toronto, Canada? Uh, we see what happens, you know. I love this place. Uh, maybe uh, try the summer, is summer like this. A little, little bit warmer, please. But uh, if, it, if it's the first week of December, hey, it's been a good week for me for the last three years. So if, uh, if it's the fourth year in a row, then so be it, you know. And look, we packed this thing out. Ariel Wani said he thought GSP was fighting tonight, so uh, it, was, it was pretty dope, man. I love these guys, man. The fans here, you guys remind me of Hawaiians. They warm, like, every, I'm walking through the underground city, which I didn't know was there until, like, midweek. We was walking outside, like, Hawaiians been like, freezing, and then out, down underneath, you could just walk with no jacket. I was like, wow, guys, we really missed, dropped the ball on this one, so <laughs> it's cool, you know. I, I'll come back for sure. I love this place. It's the 10th island, like I said. Hey, Max, the right hand, was that something that you knew going into the fight was going to be there, or was it just something that, it, you know, when you started landing it, I'm going to stick with this? Ah, uh, you know, we, we uh, were just in there. I felt it, you know, I was letting it go. I don't even think I threw that much right hands in my camp. We did a lot of stuff. I just switched it up in there, you know. I got the tattoo blessed on top, down going my right arm, and I was like, ah, I might as well bless you as much as you can, so... That's what happened. <laughs> and it, you talked about the fourth round. You said you told your corner that the fourth round was going to be it. Um, that was really the time when you saw Ortega starting to back up. What did you see from him as he was weakening that round? You know, when you're in there, you see things. You know, I just, I just felt his energy dropping, energy drop every round, every round. I, I heard his coaches talking, you know, in the first couple rounds, and he'd push, and then, you know, around, like, the third round and stuff, I heard his coaches talking, and there's no push anymore, you know. And, and then and, and when I was coming out of the third round, I told Joe, this is the round. Get ready to come in and talk to me. And then uh, when, when I didn't get the finish, I walked straight to Jordan. I was like, ah, this close. Maybe next one. And then when they called the fight, I jumped the cage. The first guy I talked to was Joe. I was like, hey, I guess I was right. <laughs> I take it back. We was there. <laughs> Congrats. Thank you. Max, after the fight, Brian went to talk to your son. Do you have any idea what he said to him? I don't know. What, what did he say, Mini Bless? I, uh, uh, he probably wasn't listening, so I, he, the, to Brian, did Brian talk to you? My opponent? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, you just gave him knuckles? Yeah, Brian's a cool dude. You know, I heard an interview of him saying that if we wasn't fighting, we can be friends. And I told him, yeah, you know, like after whatever, you know, after this fighting thing is, is done, I'll gladly come to California and hang out with you, you know. I don't know about right now, but like when we all said done and fight, I see you around. Yeah, we could totally be friends. Good dude, you know, so respect to him.
Are you at all bothered that Moicano didn't make weight? Not at all. Like, like you know, like, it's hard. He, he's a, he, he was like an alternate, you know? Like, how do you get hyped up to be an alternate? Well, you make weight and you can't fight? It's kind of it's shitty, you know what I mean? That's a shitty feeling, so I don't know how you push through to get there. And then when I walked in, we was in the same weight cutting room. So that was kind of like, I, I, I wasn't awkward. Like, I would have let them stay. Like, they, they left out of respect, I think. And that's cool. I love their team, you know? But, you know, I, and at the end of the day, it was just like, how do you get up for that? You know what I mean? How do you, like, sit there and be like, oh, I, I like hoping. Like, he, we're fighters. If I was an alternate, I wouldn't want to hope him or Ortega was dropping out so I can get my shot, you know what I mean? Like, it's hard to push for something that, that's not there to just do it, you know? If you, you ever tried cut weight, it sucks, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, like, I, I don't give him a hard time. I guarantee you give him the, the right time, the right opponent, you give him a title fight, he makes 45 for sure. Last question for me. Uh, you were supposed to fight Frankie Edgar at UFC 222. Uh -huh. Um, or hearing that you might be switching up to 155. Is that uh -huh. a name that you want to face before you move? Hey, Frank is a legend. You know, Frank is a legend. Like I said, uh, I saw Mark Henry, I mean, Mark Henry was telling, uh, talking, and I, and I told Mark Henry, hey, if, uh, if me and Frankie keep this up, we can catch up Khabib and Tony on the most misaligned fight. So, uh, but let's not do it, you know? So, but he's one of the legends. He's one of the good. You know, he got some injuries right now. And uh, if, when he figures it out, I'll be right here. I'll be right here, you know? And, if it's 55, it's 55. Like I said, you know, the boss man, the guys, he's trying to make super fights. And all the UFC guys in the back, I keep hearing them throwing names, you know what I mean? So we see what happens, you know, we see what happens. Uh, we got nothing but time on our side, so I'm here to stay, baby, you know. Like I said, is, is there anyone else? Step forward. Max, uh, when you look at the lightweight division, Dana said the top five fights he thought would be great for you, any of those top, uh, top guys. Which one do you think you match up with best and would make the most fun fight with when you look at Habib or Tony, uh, Kevin Lee, obviously McGregor? Uh, is there anyone you look at and you think you would have uh, the most fun uh, fighting? Uh, you know, everybody talk about the top three guys. You know, everybody talk about the Tony. Everybody wants to see me and Connor because we fought when I was a kid. You know what I mean? A long time ago, Dennis won. Dennis beat that Max too. You know, Dennis Bermuda beat that Max a couple of years ago. So, you know, the top 20 featherweights in the world, 30 would beat that Max, you know? So it is what it is. And then Khabib is another undefeated fighter, you know? But I got this niche, you know, I guess. I just gave an undefeated fighter his first loss. So maybe that one might excite me the most. And we're supposed to have that one. So we see what happens. You know, I don't know. I ain't, I ain't picky. Feed me. They all can get it, you know. As a competitor, because you lost to Connor, uh, would he would he have any more interest to you just so you could avenge that? You know, you're a competitor, you want to win. Uh, you lost to him. Would you want to avenge that more than against somebody else? Not, you know, not really. You know, like as a competitor, I have three losses, so I want to get them all three back. As is me, but I want to fight everyone. You know, whoever. As a competitor, I fight whoever. If you tell me some guy is the best. Let's do it, you know what I mean? Like, is this the best guy? I'm going to fight you then, you know? But put your dukes up. Let's, let's, uh, let's trade blows. And lastly, why do you, what do you attribute your great improvement to from five years ago to now? That's, five years is not a long time, but uh -huh. you are a dramatically different guy. What do you attribute the improvement to? Our great coaches. I'm, a, I'm about to give you three names. Write them down. They're going to go in the history book. Uh, Ryan Lazarus, Ivan Flores, and Darren Yap. The three-headed beast. These guys is animals. These guys break down a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, even my wrestling coach, Michael Nakagawa, he's a fighter. He's coming up, my brother. And um, but those those guys, those three guys, and those four guys, they 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 put it on the line for me all the time. And when it's go time, like uh, you know, quick story. It's funny when that Khabib fight, Rylan was leaving the hospital with his second-born child that day that we left to go and fight Khabib. I had to ask his wife and be, and. And his wife was like, hey, you better go up, kick ass, you know, that's, that's how much. And I love these guys, those, those, those four guys right there, is, uh, they br their brains behind, I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy doing it, but their brains putting it behind me, so, I, you know, I love those guys. Max, uh, Thursday, um, you know, you were singing along with your music in your open workout, um, and then you talked about your walkout song. So I need to know, what's the championship song? What's, what's the first thing you're playing tonight? Um, I don't know. Whatever. Many, many blessed probably have the have the songs, or we don't know. I don't know. We see what happens. You know, I played. Uh, you know, Thursday I was singing to my songs. Tonight, I don't know if you guys saw. I song. I sang to my song. This a rollie, not a stopwatch. I lied. It's actually an AP. 
But, uh, you know, give me my respect. Give it my respect. <laughs> it's cool, man. You know, shout out to Six God. What curse? Told you guys I was here to stay. You know, the Blessed Express is on the move, like I said. All aboard. Max, this just became official. Uh, with your performance tonight, you became, you passed Michael Bisbing and Frankie Edgar for the most significant strikes in UFC history. Uh, you just turned 27 this week. That, that's honestly incredible. Uh, just what does that record mean to you to already own that so young in your career? That's dope. That's it. You know what I mean? These guys are legends, you know? And, and I'm chasing these guys. You know, Michael's a legend. Like I said, Frankie's a legend, man. So I'm telling you guys, I'm going to set the bar. I'm trying to set the bar. And I dare you guys to catch me. Come get me. Come. You know, if, uh, you know, this world, we already got one Max Holloway. So stop trying to be me. Be yourself and come beat me. I dare you. How high do you think you could push that record? Oh, I can push it high. I can push that. I want. I want it to be done fighting like mid thirties. So we got. Uh, we got. We got. Yeah, we got some time, baby. Hey Max, that sounds kind of messed up. But was that the most? And I think you could hear how much everyone in the arena enjoyed that fight. Was that the most enjoyable fight you've been in? Yeah, you know, I I felt loose in there. Like I said, I was talking to Joe Rogan. I saw my son talking to him. My coaches was talking to me. I was talking back. I was talking story. I was talking to Ortega in there. Talk to everyone, you know. If someone, if I had a cell phone, I'd probably be texting someone. Who knows? You know, I was having the time of my life, man. I was, I, I miss this. You know what I mean? Like I talked about depression earlier in this week, cause uh, I love this so much, and I got, I got it taken away from me. I couldn't even train, you know. So I finally got to go in there and do my thing, and it was so fun, you know. It's so fun. You guys got to see. And uh, as far as you're concerned, where does that fight stand among uh, the best of 2018? I told you guys, Chris. You guys are so lucky. You guys, you guys, Christmas came early. You guys got a Loma and a Holloway fight on the same day. You guys welcome, you know, and uh, they're probably going to replay this card. I told you guys, they're going to replay it. I'm not going to be surprised if Christmas Eve, the, this card is replayed because they did it the last three years. So you guys, you know, well, congratulations. You guys going to get like three free presents, even if you're supposed to get coal. Hey, Max, just a quick follow-up on um, the, the kind of comments you made earlier in the week about or, you know, for people that are, you know, battling uh, depression. Um, it got a lot of positive, you know, reaction online. Did you see any of that? Did people reach out to you after you made those comments? Yeah, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people. It's, uh, it's crazy because, you know, a lot of people forget we're humans. I'm human just like you guys. And uh, they, they keep forgetting they're superheroes, you know. They're just not there yet, you know. Like, I, everybody keep calling me champ. I, I was a champ before I had this. this. This doesn't make me a champ. I can put it all the way on the ground, put it on the ground, whatever you want to do. I was a champion before when I started. When I said I wanted to be a UFC, I, I carried myself as a champ. And, and that's what it is. This is, just, this is just extra. This is just something to prove to you guys. Like, look, I already knew I was a champ, you know. Now, right here, whatever, you know. And, and that's what I said, you know, don't be scared, you know. At the end of the day, talk to somebody. But you need yourself, you know. You got to back up yourself. You bless yourself. And don't be scared to uh, reach out, you know. Surround yourself with a great team. Like I said, I got a great, great group of guys behind me that's always behind me. And they love me. And, uh. You know, reach out to people. You know, depression is a, is a real thing. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you, boss. Thanks, Max. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All done? Max, we have a picture? Yeah, please. Boxing is a very limited form of fighting. What ultimate fighting is, it's the actual sport of fighting. A lot of people excited to see what Isaac can do as an MMA heavyweight. Andre loves to compete. He fights because he loves it. They are training with world-class fighters in order to be successful. The question, do they belong inside that octagon? Look at this sprawl, beautiful sprawl. Oh, good combination. Oh! Severn goes to his back. Frost's not doing a bad job defensively, though. Oh! 
both of these guys has a chance to silence all the doubters, all the haters. It is the hottest ticket in UFC history. The hype behind this contest is insane. It's going to be an amazing rematch. I cannot wait to see it. of short stories, pieces of a puzzle that, assembled, help us understand it all. How the Great Ones rose, where they came from, and how they endure. What they fought for, what they did to survive, why they believed where no one else did, and how they forged a lasting legacy. If you thought you knew UFC history, this is the whole story in 25 parts. UFC 25 years in short. Boxing is a very limited form of fighting. 